Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I want to talk about the feature selection, which is a fundamental step in the data modeling. This step is going to help us to select the most relevant features respect to our target variables. So it leads to less complex model uh, that help us to prevent overfitting. And since we have a less complex model, it uh, leads to um, faster training. So here you can see uh, different methods uh, of the feature selection and the condition that we can use them. So it's a, li a little guide that uh, we can select based on the type of input variables and the type of output variable. So let's say if our input variable is continuous, so numeric, and the output variable is also numeric, we can use PCA, PCA, or correlation analysis. On the other hand, if the output variable is categorical, we can use LDA. But if our input variable is categorical and our output variable is continuous, uh, we can use ANOVA test. And on the other hand, if the output variable is categorical, we can use k squared in order to test the dependency of the features to the target variable. So in this tutorial, I'm going to focus on these two methods, which is applying correlation analysis and PCA to see how we can find the best set of feature for applying in machine learning. So I'm going to first load the principal uh, libraries, which are pandas, numpy, Seaborn and Matplot. And then from sqlearn, I'm going to use a standard scalar in order to transform my data, the composition for PCA analysis, and data set I'm going to use for loading the Boston data. So Boston data is a data set uh, which is already inside sqlearn, which includes the pricing data, uh, pricing data of the houses in Boston. So, my right to download it? Yes. So, if we check the description, we can see that the number of instances is around 500, and there are 13 features inside the dataset. So, all of the features are numeric, and for example, it has features based on the crime rate, if the zone is uh, residential, the proportion of residential land zone or non-retail business or um, the tax rate and so on. So the target variable is the median value of the owner of white houses. And uh, let's aggregate all of the data into a unique data frame, which is called all data. And let's check it out exactly we can see around 500 entries and 14 columns so this is the head of our data so we can see what are the observations on the top of our data set and just to be sure you're checking the number of missing value that we can see there is no missing value so at the first step i'm going to use correlation so I'm applying correlation on my data in order to see what are the features which are correlated to my target variable. So my target variable is uh, median value that we can see the um, uh, squares which are having the higher, um, not the higher, but the darker color are having higher correlation respect to the squares with uh, pale colors. So for example, LSTAT, uh, PT ratio, age, induce um, are among the top features which are highly correlated with this variable. So I'm going to sort the correlation value. I'm going to take the top values out of it. And there we go. We can see them in a list. And then for data modeling, I'm going to use XGB regressor. So I'm going to use this feature uh, to train my model, which is a XGB regressor. And for that, first, I'm going to um, use the train test split in order to split my data set. 
and as the metric I'm going to use mean absolute error, mean mean squared error and explain variance score. So there we go. I'm going to select just those columns into in my x variable and this is my target variable. Then I'm splitting my data, 80% for the training and 20% for testing. Let's check the head of the data. There we go. We can see that the data are randomized. And then I'm going to call my model and fit my training data in the model. So these are the default parameters that our model is having. Since I didn't put any other parameters inside, uh, we are OK for now. I'm going to use my model for prediction of my test data. And then let's apply my metric of mean absolute error, mean squared error, uh, root mean squared error, mean squared error, and experience explained variance. As we can see, the metrics are really good, um, which is accept acceptable. So let's see um, if the result is going to change if we apply PCA. So for applying PCA, I'm going to first assign all of my data except the target variable in the X, and then this is the target variable. Then, as before, I'm dedicating 80% to the testing and uh, to the training and 20% for the testing. There we go. So one fundamental step when we want to apply PCA is that we need to transform our data. We need to normalize them. So I'm calling a standard scalar as a way to standard to normalize my data. And then I'm applying I'm creating a transformer using my training data. And then I'm going to use that one for transforming my test data as well. So there we go. I can see that our data are normalized. And then I'm going to use this to apply uh, as an input for my PCA decomposer, decomposer. So PCA is going to select the Mm, it's going to rank the components, which are explaining our data uh, by highest uh, ratio of variation. So actually, PCA is going to decompose um, our data into the lower dimensions. It's a method for dimensionality re reduction as well. So we are going to use this in order to select the the set of features which are explaining our data better than the other features. So here, by specifying that I want to select seven features, it means that these seven features are explaining um, the most of my data. So here I'm calling my PCA and then I'm creating a transformer on my training data set. And then I'm applying that transformer on my test data as well. So um, let me delete that empty cell. So let's check the shape. As we can see, we have the same uh, number of observation that we had in my training data. But let me apply also this one. So the number of observations are totally same, but the number of columns are different. So this is the original data set, and then this is the uh, result out of PCA. So as we can see, the number of columns is exactly as the, num as the number of components that we have specified. So we can use this as the feature for our training model. So I'm going to use XGB regressor as before. And then as the input, I'm going to um, put the observation, the training observation, uh, which is the output of PCA. And then we are having our uh, Y train as the also another diamond, another um, input parameter. So there we go. 
let's uh, predict the output and then we are running our metrics on our data and as we can see our uh, mean absolute error is one unit more and our root mean square here we have five and here we have six so it is zipped slightly higher respect to the uh, correlation analysis but they're really similar so um, i think i cannot conclude that which one is doing better but uh, i wanted just to show you how you are able to apply pca or um, correlation analysis to select the feature from your entire data set. This data set is really small. It is better maybe that you apply on the larger data set, which is having much more columns and features to select from. Uh, and that's it. I hope that you learned something new out of this tutorial and you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. See you.